ever since design became a profession, typography has been one of the core subjects in the field. In essence, the definition of typography is the art of conveying meaning to the reader or user through the visual design of typesetting. Sounds kind of creative, right? But what's typography? Just text, letters, or something more? How did it even appear? Why didn't we just continue painting on the rocks? Hmm? And what are its future prospects? Typography is a set of text design norms that are based on research on the perception of set by the user, taking into account the accumulated experience of specialists in this field. Thus, it becomes clear that typography and mileage are two interrelated concepts. Typography is nothing but the art of layout. Every text creating by typing, writing or drawing can be thought of as a set of typographic rules. However, typography is also a science, the study of which experts dedicate their whole lives. There are many definitions for the concept of typography. In the most general form, we can say that typography is a graphic design of printing text, using typing and layout based on certain rules specific to a given language. Come on, speak easier. On the one hand, typography is the art of graphic design, and on the other hand, a set of rules that determine the use of fonts and design tools in order to make the text the most optimal, clear and interesting in the perception of the reader. With the help of text modeling and editing, specialists in the field create original aesthetic images, make the text alive, give the ability to convey the idea not only with its content, but also with the graphic component, for example, through posters. I can do it. Mm, stop! If we went back to graphic, then why did we come up with typography anyway? We will draw on the walls and that's all. However, I assume that then, for example, to read a book, you will have to become a bodybuilder. Can you imagine how much it would weigh? By the way, yeah, the whole story began with books. Initially, all books were written by hand. This required a lot of time and money. Typography appeared along with the invention of typography, as there was a need for printed text to be well perceived by readers. The first typesetting forms appeared a little less than a thousand years ago. They were invented in the 1040s in China by a man called Bai Shen. The only thing we know about those molds is that they were made of ions and therefore were very short-lived. I suppose it's broken. 400 years later, John Gutenberg invented the printing press and metal typesetting. From that moment on, printing began to develop rapidly. Now the printing process has become faster and easier. But the main thing is that now the characters could be used many times. Since they were cast from the lead, which ensured durability and reduced the cost of production process. At least hand will rest. The beginning of the mass production of books and newspapers allowed people to learn more about the world around them to learn faster. It also greatly increased literacy. Before the invention of printing, books were a luxury that only rich could afford. But the advent of the printing press made books available to everyone. Books are interesting, but it's typography that interests us. What about the popular fonts of that time? Initially, Gutenberg chose Gothic as it was the main dominant cursive type of the time. This font is called black letter. It has broad horizontal lines 
and thin vertical strokes. It's great for calligraphy, but awkward for printing, because the letters are too crowded. Further, publishers began to give preference to subtle and refined types of antiqua. A characteristic feature of this group of fonts is the presence of serifs. In addition, they were chosen for their aesthetics and legibility. The first antiqua typefaces were created by Nicholas Jensen. The author was inspired by ancient Roman symbols that he found on ancient monuments. These fonts include Garamond, Minion, Palatina, Century, Schoolbook. From the beginning of the 16th century, typography developed in the style French Renaissance. Font design became more sophisticated when decorative elements were used, such as ornamental borders. If earlier fonts were quite similar to handwritten text, now they are taking on a more rigorous outline. At this time, Francesco de Bologna invents cursive. In the middle of the 18th century, the work of Pierre Fournier had a very great influence on typography. A characteristic feature of his edition was a significant density of typing and elongating proportions of letters. A very large contribution to the development of typography was made by his book Typographic Guide, published in 1773. In it, he defined the rules for determining font sizes. The Fournier system is still used in modern computer publishing systems. However, perhaps one of the biggest figures in the world of typography is John Baskerville. He abandoned the use of ornaments and decorations and began to advocate the use of pure typography based solely on type design. The typeface he created is called Baskerville and is a great example of transitional style. This style also includes fonts such as Bookman, Times New Roman and Gazlan. Around the same time, Giambattista Batoni was working, who introduced the new antiqua into active use. All his works were much more rigorous than their predecessors, but they were still elegant and pleasant to the eye. The most famous font of this period, Badoni, can also be found in the modern typography. A significant leap in the development of typography occurred with the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Typography began to be actively used in advertising and periodicals. The realities of the time demanded more rigor from fonts, and fonts focused on headings were also required. Thus, at the beginning of the 19th century, grotesques, Egyptian fonts and bold fonts were introduced into use. At that time, typography wasn't focused on books, but on advertising. Since Hedy had to be noticeable and readable, they began to actively use sensory fonts. Prominent examples of such fonts are Arial, Utra and Helvetica. The font has become part of the commercial realm as a new form of communication. However, at the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, the art noir direction became very popular in Russia and Europe. Typography temporarily lost its rigor. Much attention was paid to floor ornaments and decorative elements. At that time, many Russian painters became interested in creating their own fonts. For example, Vrubil, Pinot, Rerich, and etc. However, their fonts were extremely decorative and could only be used in advertisements and headlines. I'm an artist, a picture, sir. Since 1930, the neoclassical style began to develop in typography. Font and typography creators began to emphasize the legibility of signs and text. Also, attention was paid 
to the simplicity of the font design and its familiarity for the reader. In the 1914 and 1916, the Swiss typographic school made a great contribution to the art of placing printed information. To streamline the printing composition, they used various typographic modular grids. Joseph Müller Brockman, Armin Hoffman, and Emil Ruder most actively spread this style. In 1970 to 1980, Expressionists flourished in typography. A playful beginning appeared, which gave impetus to development of figurative typography. Now, a letter can be an image of an object, and an image can be a letter. I can be a rabbit. Oh my god, no, I can't. However, such fonts didn't come into wide use. When computers appeared, fonts popular at the time and actively used were computerized. In the early 90s, British type designer Matthew Carter created the first Web 1.0 fonts, Georgia 1993 and Verdena 1996. Both fonts commissioned by Microsoft specifically for use on web pages were originally created as bitmaps to match the pixels of the then standard screen resolution and then turn it into outline fonts. For the sake of ease and readability on screens, Carter created fonts with a large font point, X high, an open aperture, and enough space around. A decade later, subpixel rendering, also known as a font smoothing, appeared, which adds red, green, or blue pixels to the edges of letters to improve readability even on low-resolution screens. The origin of subpixel rendering is still debatable. Apple and then IBM and Microsoft patented various implementations with their technical specifications. But Microsoft was the first company to implement their technology in their products. Shortly thereafter, Microsoft also released the clear type collection of fonts, designed to showcase the benefits of subpixel rendering. Initially, it included Calibri, Corbel, Cambria, Candara, Consoles, and Constantia. In 2014, Apple released a set of San Francisco fonts inspired by already well-known modernist Helvetica. San Francisco comes with several fonts, each targeting different environments. SF Pro is for macOS, iOS, and tvOS while SF Compact was designed specifically for the Apple Watch. The main difference between them is that in San Francisco Pro, rounded letters O and N S have rounded sides, while SF Compact, they are flat. Thanks to the flat size, these letters can be typeset with more spacing, which increases the readability of the text at small size which is especially important for watches. In 2016, Adobe, Apple, Google and Microsoft jointly introduced variable fonts. The advantage of this new technology is the ability to use multiple fonts within one without increasing the file size. Variable fonts solve the problem of loading a separate file of each font to change the width, height, weight and other parameters. In theory, variable fonts can be changed along several axes, including their optical size, which directly affects the readability of the font. Currently, variable fonts provide a lot of room for experimentation. You can experiment with them on axis praxis. Don't rush to play with fonts because you and I have to learn the rules of this game. To begin with, I propose to decide on the main purpose of the typography. The main task of typography in design is to create bright, alluring images that attract everyone's attention and remain in memory for a long time, focusing the reader's attention on important information. But, at the same time, one should not forget that any text should be understandable, readable, 
and easy to read by understanding consumer. Now, in order you and I will be on the same page of book, let's analyze basic definitions and concepts. Tab phase. A tab phase is a set of font groups. This is kind of style family, the members of which are united by the nuance of style. The tab phase includes a certain set of characters, consisting of numbers, letters, punctuation marks, and etc. There are several types of tab phases. Many typefaces owe the name to the time of origin, the times, a developer's name, Germont, a national identity, Hollander, or some technical distinguishing feature, Compact. There are several types of typefaces. For example, Antiqua. They repeat the construction of letters written with the pen. They have serifs and noticeable difference in the thickness of the main and connection strokes. Most antiqua books are good for reading long text. The serifs show the line of the line, and the contrast make it easy to distinguish the letters. Grotesques Grotesques or sans serif fonts don't have serifs and there is almost no difference in thickness of the strokes. If there is any, then it's quite insignificant. Serrated fonts appeared at the end of the 19th century and were used as a display fonts. Massive letters were visible from afar and attracted attention well. Handwritten These are fonts that imitate handwriting with some kind of writing instrument. Pen, brush, marker, pen or chalk. The shape of the letters in them usually more rounded. There are fewer sharp corners and there are often connection strokes between the letters. Also, scripts are usually characterized by the tilt of the axis of the letters to the right, from light to intense. Occasionally, scripts are typeset, but usually they are accidental fonts. Flap fonts These fonts appeared in the 19th century. They resemble serifs, but their contrast is low, and the serifs are massive and wide. Flap fonts can be used as a typefaces, or as a display fonts, decorative fonts. This group includes fonts that cannot be classified as grotesque, serif, slab, or cursive. Letters can take an abyssal shape, have a different size, slope, texture. Unfamiliar letters form are often the most difficult to read. The most decorative fonts are only suitable for headings. The font is often confused with the concept of typeface, so now let's switch to typographic definitions. Font. A font in typography is a set of characters that are combined in their style. Size, thickness, height, length, spacing and theme into one coherent composition. Thus, a group of fonts of different types and sizes have an exceptional design is a typeface. In other words, the font is an integral element of the typeface. Size. The concept of size implies the height of the font, taking into account the descenders and the centers of the letter. The unit of measure in this case is the typographical point. Let's say 12 point size is a 12 point in a high. In this case, one point is equal to 172nd of English inch or 0.352 millimeters. Leading. This parameter indicates the distance between the main lines of adjacent rows. The unit of measurement is typographic point. As a rule, the leading is set in such a way that is one fifth larger than the size used. For example, if the text type in 15 size, then the leading will be 18 point. For artistic purposes, leading can be increased or decreased. However, due to the fact that this parameter affects the readability of the text, Small leading is set quite rarely, sometimes in headings, but no more. Kerning. This is a spacing between letters. The primary function of kerning is the selection of various intervals between different pairs of specific characters to increase the readability of the text. In layout programs, kerning is a change in the distance between letters, which is set as a percentage. It can be negative or positive. In first case, the letters are shifted, and in the second, they are moved apart. Tracking Spaces between letters that are used relative to groups of characters. Words, lines, paragraphs, 
etc. Tracking function is recharging or compatting the set. In addition, it allows you to drive in and out of words, change the number of characters typing in a specific area. Rubrication. This is such a system of dividing the text, in which subordinate headings of various levels reflect the relationship and coordination of the parts they had. Headings, chapters, section, subsections. Grapheme. The main form of the sign which allows you to distinguish it from any other, regardless of the artistic nuances of execution. The grapheme most often delimits units of text. Let's say the grapheme of number 1 make it possible to distinguish it from the number 2, and no matter what typeface they were typing. Glyph A glyph is a specific graphical representation of grapheme. When several glyphs are used in the text for the same grapheme, then they are called allographs of each other. Low case. This is a standard small letters of the alphabet, with the help of which everything is typed, with the exception of the first at the beginning of the sentence and improper names, in other cases. Low case characters are used in the alphabets of several European languages, for example, in Latin, Armenian, Greek. There are alphabets that in principle don't have as a such a division into uppercase and low case letters. Capital letters. Sentences usually begin with such letters. Often capital letters have a different grapheme. If the first one at the beginning of a text or paragraph is very large in size, then it's called initial. Capital. In this case, the capital letter is slightly larger than size, but a reduced high compared to the normal capital letter. However, it's higher than low case letter. The main scope of capitals is headings. This allows you to complement the typography with just one typeface. Alignment is a way of positioning an incomplete string relative to the vertical boundaries of the set. There is alignment on the left and right, certain and justified, by format. Lettering Lettering is a graphic drawing of letters and signs that forms an integral composition. By and large, it's a font ensemble. Lettering is a very popular element of typography at the moment. Stripe A stripe is a usable area of the media on which text and pictures are located. It can be filled with different density and regularity, which allows you to leave gaps inside. If a page is a measure of counting with a numbering of printed units, then a bar is a printed volume that occupies the entire page. Thus. The stripe is a usable area of the page, which can be said about the margin surrounding it. If you have handled all this, my congratulations, then we will dive even deeper and analyze the letters in parts. I slice it. <laughs> letters aren't just lines and dots, and now you will learn how individual letters are at least a typographic art. For example, did you know that some letters, including uppercase K and R, have legs, while others, such as lowercase enemy, have shoulders? Many typefaces even have ears. Little lines run from the top to bottom down the lowercase G. And the S has a spine, the main curved line within the letter. But not all terms in topography are taken from anatomy. For example, X high. X measures the height of all lowercase letters and make up the same font. It's called its high because the letter X of each typeface defines the size. Cap high. Cap high is a measure of the height of capital letters. All capital letters in the same typeface have the same letter in solution with an obvious bottom, such as E. Leg. A downward stroke, an element similar to horizontal, but directed from the main stroke down to the type line. The sign seems to stick to it, used in R, K, J, Y. Hand. A straight or curved stroke, directed upward or open, a horizontal, diagonal, as a lowercase k, element ending in a hatch with a single stroke and another hanging in a surface. Ear. A small stroke directed from the lowercase r in some styles. A teardrop-shaped element on a stem, 
typical for some styles of lowercase letter G and R. Shoulder. Stroke curve down and to the right. Lowercase h, mean and have it. An element similar to horizontal, but rounding down at the end. Tail. External curve stroke. Directed downward from the capital O, R and K. External strokes of lowercase g, j, p, q and y. Are also sometimes called tails. Uppercase q element. Spine. The main curve stroke inside a capital and lowercase s. Ascender. Stroke that extends upwards above the x high. Descender. A stroke hanging down below the x high. A curl, swash, is a decorative element that replaces a set of in capital layers. Crossbar, bar. Horizontal stroke at the letters A, H, E, and F. Serve. A short stroke at the beginning and at the end of the main strokes. End element terminal. The end of the stroke that doesn't have setup. Bow. A stroke that creates a closed semicircular space, like at the lowercase dbo and uppercase dnb. Counter. An enclosed space within such as o, b, d, and a. Rex also consists of bowls. Spool. A small protrusion that divides from the main stroke of the capital G in some styles. Stem. The main vertical stroke of straight letters. The first diagonal stroke of letters A and V is also called stem. Arc or link. A stroke connecting the ball and the loop of low case G. Loop. The lower oval element low case G. Drop. The drop is another important distinguishing element of the letter. In appearance, the drop are more or less round, which also speaks of the nature and style of the phone. Trap or ink trap. If the angle within the letter between the strokes is less than 30 degrees, this can create printing difficulties, as the ink will flow into the space and the saturation of the letter will be uneven. Therefore, when designing, the space in this place is the pin. A trap is made, and when the letter is printed, the paint will fill this extra space. Here, you'll be right to ask me about numbers. The topography uses Arabic and Roman numerals. If there is a capital in the text, then it's better to type Roman numbers with it. Arabic numbers distinguish into two types. Mescula. Mescula. All numbers are the same height as uppercase. Minuscule or medial, just above low case letters. Some have ascenders or descenders. Each lowercase or uppercase letter has a distinct structure that defines its meaning. If the design of the letter deviates significantly from the usual, then the letter ceases to convey its meaning, that is, it loses its function. The design of each letter consists of certain set of strokes, which can be four types – vertical, horizontal, obliquer, or curvilinear. Each type of stroke has its own optical properties. Vertical – unstable, suspending in space. Horizontal – stable, integrated into the reading stream. Obliquer – dual, strongly constructed with the predominant horizontal vertical composition of typography. Curvilinear, all rounded. Expressiveness varies from a short tense arc to a slow long arc. In combination, the optical properties of individual strokes are combined in new forms. The final forms of the letter can evoke different emotions. A letter can be static and dynamic, simple and ornamental, light and heavy. This determines the originality of the letter. The height determines the weight distribution. Upper case, numbers and low case without extensions, AO, have a uniform horizontal weight distribution. Letters with ascenders are unbalanced upwards. Those with descenders are disbalanced downwards. The form determines the static or dynamic of the letter. Symmetric, static, asymmetric, dynamic. The letter optical weight refers to its density.
that is how much is abstract from the background. Stroke outline also determine the optical qualities of the letter. Depending on the dominant strokes, the letter can be rounded or angular. Considering various fonts and comparing them with each other, pay attention to the following form parameters. Same proportions. Fonts are wide and narrow. These can be assessed, for example, by the letter O. If it graduates toward a circle, the font is wide, and if it's a vertically elongated oval, it's narrow. Narrow fonts look strict and solid. The premium brands like to use them. Font letter contrast. Font contrast is the difference between base and connection strokes. If some strokes are significantly thinner than others, it's a high contrast font. If all strokes are the same, there is no contrast. Low contrast text is best used for body text, while high contrast text is more suitable for headings. Variation in font. The width of the letters also affect the character and emotional component of the text and the character of the font as a whole. Characteristics in a fixed width font do not have to be equally wide or narrow, but all characters tend to be the same size. This can be well determined by writing the letters OHB next to each other. Different width signs can be distinguished by the letters O, H, E, where it is immediately clear that the letter E is almost twice as narrow as the letter O. Tilt of axis of rounding signs. This is separate setting relevant for constructing fonts. It's connecting with the peculiarities of writing that includes the development of the first fonts. The axis of the ovals in them are slightly tilted to the left. Open and closed letter font form. The openness and closeness of the letter is determined by its aperture, that is, the degree of openness of the round characters of the font. What's it? This is the distance between the ends of the letter and the angle of cut at those ends, most revealed in such letter as C, E, S. They are closed fonts or fonts with a small aperture, Helvetica. Semi-closed or fonts with the intermediate aperture, Exidence Grotesque, and open fonts with a large aperture, Futura. The degree of openness of the font conveys the tone of the message. If you need to advertise a company as a youthful and friendly, then open fonts are well suited for this. If, on the contrary, it's necessary to convey an important and strict message, then it's better to use closed fonts. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you about a very interesting and one of the most popular techniques in typography at present time – ligatures. A ligature is a one character of font set that contains two or three characters adjacent to it. A ligature arose from problem of combining some letters, the limits of which, when typed normally, intersect or unnecessary sloppy space appear between them. Interestingly, when you type text, a ligature is already provided in the combination of letters. Two or three characters are automatically changed to one, the ligature. There are basic and additional ligatures, the latter are less common. Ligatures aren't found in Cyrillic alphabet, so they are most often found in the Latin alphabet. And now back to the shape of the form. Just like in composition, letters have their own form and counterform. The nature of perception of black imprint of letters of alphabet is so familiar to any reader that the reserved image of white letters on black background is perceived as a something original. When perceiving a typesetting line, the reader usually feels the rhythm of the form and practically doesn't pay attention to the counterform, perceiving only black on white, but not white on black. However, any black shape created on the white plane is preserved not only by black, but equally by the white surroundings. 
It's no coincidence that when creating graphics of letters, the effect of optical illusions are taken into account. When black surrounded by white and white surrounded by black are perceived differently. This is precisely the problem of form and counterforming type when the artist compares from counterform specific details, basic stroke, flow, interletter and interletter gaps, and etc. The ratio of amount of white to black in a set has a big impact on readability. If you make a dense set without gaps, then the interletter gaps will visually work more actively. By chasing the inline space, you can achieve a harmonious relationship between intro and interletter spaces. If you increase the line spacing, then the counterform of the white space will distract the reader, and the black letters will, as it were, dissolve into white space. Of all the variety of fonts, the counter forms the most effectively perceived in those that have fairly dense main and additional strokes with a thickness approaching the interletter gap or a size slightly larger than it. In this case, the copy form of the interletter elements with the slightest decrease in the interletter and line spacing begins to work actively. What else affects the perception of form and counterform in typography? These are optical compensation. When constructing letters and their elements, it's necessary to take into account optical illusions that arise during the perception of graphic forms. This is due to the fact that geometric accuracy in the construction of letters may not correspond to visual perception causing sensation of a regular shape, which is why, when constructing signs, it's necessary to compensate for visual illusions in one way or another. Among the features of the visual perception of graphic illusions, the following can be distinguished. First. Of two lines of the same thickness, the horizontal one will appear thicker than the vertical one, and the slanted left line will appear thicker than the right one. Therefore, when designing horizontal straight strokes, should be thicker than the vertical ones by about 2 to 5 percent, and left-handed strokes should be somewhat thinner than the right-handed ones. For the same reason, the thickness of the streaks in routed characters should be somewhat greater than the thickness of straight vertical strokes. Second, the horizontal line strictly located in the middle of the form visually seems to be underestimated, for example, in letter H. Therefore, horizontal strokes are somewhat overestimated by about 2-5%, located not on the mathematical but on the optical line of the font. Third, rounded and pointed shapes being geometrically equal in height to rectangle or square one appear smaller in size. Therefore, pointed sides are made somewhat higher and rounded ones above, above and below rectangular letters. In the letter B, the maximum thickness of the top flow is greater than or equal to the thickness of the main stroke but less the thickness of the bottom flow, which gives the lower part of the letter more weight. The visual stability of letters enhanced by difference in thickness in the connection strokes. The upper connection strokes, for example in the letter O, may be slightly thicker than the low ones, and the oblique connection strokes, as in a letter A, may be slightly thicker than horizontal ones. This visually provides a connecting stroke with equality in thickness. However, despite the constructive variety of signs, the letters of Cyrillic and Latin alphabets are based on basic geometric shapes in their combinations. These shapes are rectangle, circle and triangle. We already talked about color contrast in the previous video about color. Now let's turn to the typography. Contrast are used ubiquitously in both web and graphic design in order to direct the reader's attention to important messages, 
structures the presentation of textual information and increase its perception by the reader. Size. First of all, the significance is indicated by the large size, point size, of the font. Large font grabs the eye and immediately captures the user's attention, though this method is usually used in the presentation of headings. And when you need to reduce the importance, it's easy to do it in a smallest font. This includes the rule of separation of typographic hierarchy. The first level of typography is a big font. These are headings and captions that draw readers into the design. This is the largest font in design. Second level. This includes elements such as subheadings, captions, quotes, infographics, and other small blocks of text that add information to the first level of text. The design of these text blocks plays an important role, but usually much less than the lettering in the first level of typography. The third level of typography is the body text of your project. This is often one of the smallest typefaces in design, but should be large enough to be fully understandable by all potential users. Such a font should be simple and consistent in design, spacing, and general use. Other levels of typography include effects applied to type at the third level for small areas of impact. Effects such as bold, italic, underline, and color can draw attention to specific areas of body text. These effects work best when applied to text in the same size and font as the third level. Effects are used sparingly and just in a few words. Examples of other levers include bold words for impact, italics, or color for emphasis. Second, fonts. You can also achieve contrast by combining different fonts. There are two main types of serif fonts, serif and sans serif. Both are used to create contrast between the text block, sans serif, and the title itself, serif. For obvious and large contrast, a sans font decorative are also used. Third, color. This is a traditional way of pointing out the difference between headings and body text. Using the color contrast method, you can emphasize something forbidden or impossible with faded colors. And then, on the contrary, you need to attract attention bright colors are better for highlighting. Color contrasts are also used to highlight individual paragraphs or certain words inside the text. Completely neutralize the importance of the text or parts of its combination of a small font size with faded colors and light background. 4. Register. If both the text and the title use the same font, then you can increase the contrast using the case. Capital letters attracts more attention, so this method will be more effective when submitting headlines. 5. Inscription. Bold font is another way to contrastly highlight significant part of the text, but here you should not overdo it. Some designers make entire lines bold. As a result, the contrast of the fragment is lost and its importance reduced. 6. Orientation. Letters rotated upside down or in any orientation other than horizontal can have immediate appeal to the eye because they are placed in a way that is different from what is expected. This can work well for short words or phrases as a first level of text. Recommendation Often used when creating posters. Due to the non-standard placement of text, you can build a line for reading for the viewer. Space White space plays an important role in shaping your design. Its good use will tell you the reader where the beginning is, where the pause is, where the end is, and what to do next. There are various ways to create space. Blocking, creating padding between block elements. Paragraphing, creating spaces between elements. Letter spacing, line spacing, lie height. Using paragraphs to work with quotes and lists. Thank you for watching my video. If you found it useful and helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. And also ring on the bell in order not to miss the next adventure to the world of creativity. Have a good day. Goodbye.